Hey, today we're talking about underwater plants. You know, oxygenators, submerged plants. You know, the, the reason we have these is to starve out the algae in the pond. We would rather have these nice looking plants growing up from the bottom of our pond than have green water. Now, the best of these is an acarus. Now, there's also hornwort, but uh, I prefer an acarus, and I think most people do. You know, they, um, typically when you order it in, it's going to be delivered to you, or if you buy it at a local uh, pond supply store, it's going to just be in a, in a small bundle. You know, it's be about yay tall, and there'll be four or five, six strands, usually wrapped with a rubber band, or um, sometimes like a lead weight, like a wraparound lead weight that looks like a rubber band, but it'll hold it down. Now, do not just throw that in your pond. I've seen a lot of people do that, though. You know, and, and sometimes these things are fairly expensive, and depending on you know where you're at and where you're buying it from. So the last thing you want to do is just you know chunk that anacris into the bottom of your pond, you know, for two reasons. Number one, your fish will eat it. If you have large koi, boy, that's just a Scooby snack. It's gone. So you'd be much better off. You know, throwing them something else for a treat, you know, some lettuce or something, uh, be much cheaper. Now, the other thing is some folks have very deep ponds. Um, you know, a lot of times I would keep my, my pond around four foot deep. So, in that case, I would need to put any underwater plants on a shelf because if you throw it that far deep, it's not going to get enough sunlight to live. And eventually, you know, the next time you're cleaning out your pond or netting in the bottom of the pond, you're going to see that you don't have anything left except a little lead weight uh, and just maybe a little stock of rotting and nacris. So don't just throw it in. Now what I would, you know, what I would do is I would plant it. I would find like a, a, a shallow, like a, um, you know, something you'd use for seeds in a greenhouse or, or where you've bought some seed type plants. It doesn't have to, you know, <laughs> hold the water. It can have holes in it. But what I, what I like to do is have at least be enough so that it can hold gravel. And I want to plant the anacris in the gravel. Uh, no soil of any kind. You know, the, the only fertilizer this plant needs is your fish waste, you know, and any of the CO2 that the fish are creating. So that's good. So don't add any soil to your water. We don't want to make the problem worse. Now, typically, I've seen where uh, uh, an off-the-top formula is one bunch per square foot of pond. So you have a three by five pond, you'd need 15 bunches. Um, you know, an eight by 10 pond would need 80 bunches. That's kind of on the low side, but um, it would be a good start. So if I had a three by five pond, I would plant the entire 15 bunches in a, in a small planter, and I would not even just put that planter in the pond. I would put it in a pond, uh, say a pump protector. You know, you, the pump protectors that you get to that basically have like a lead uh, weighted area. You put your, your, your pump in there and then the top one is more of a floating so that it, it keeps the structure. That's what I would plant the anacris in. You know, my pot would be there just as if it were a pump. And that way it can grow because most of those are about two foot tall. It's going to have to grow two foot before it starts sticking through the netting. And at that point, I don't mind the fish munching on it as long as it fills up that uh, that pump protector. And then what I would do, if that's if you've got it in the water at the right depth, it's getting enough sun and your fish aren't eating it, when that net gets full, then I would think about adding another one. If you had two or three of those planted around your pond, protected to keep them from being eaten, you're going to have a great algae control, control system going right there in your pond. And the anacris looks really good. I mean, it, you know, as it grows through the netting, if you get it established well enough and you don't have too many fish, it may even grow fast enough to stick on out of the netting, you know, so it looks, you know, like, a, like you don't even see the netting. And then the fish will lay their eggs in it. Uh, you'll, get some, you'll get some pretty good benefits from it and it looks good. So, you know, those are the main tips I have for the underwater plants. Um, be sure you're protected. If you don't want to go out and spend the money on the, uh, the pump protector, rig something. You know, take some, take some PVC and, and stick it together and drill some holes in it, otherwise it'll float. And just wrap some kind of netting, like a bird netting that you'd put around a tree to keep the bigger koi out of there. But um, I wouldn't throw the anacris in your pond without some protection. So anyway, those are the key tips on underwater plants. Good luck with your pond.